The hills here are alive with movie magic, so I wanted to show you how you can embed video into your PowerPoint. The most reliable way to embed video in PowerPoint is to go to the Insert tab on the ribbon, and then Video on the right-hand side. Here, you can choose a video on my PC and navigate to the appropriate file on your computer. Once selected, click Insert and you'll insert video into PowerPoint, where the video appears on your slide just like a standard shape. Using the white grab handles, you can resize the video and move the video to anywhere you like on the slide. If you embed video into PowerPoint slides that have other elements on them, then try to make the video line up with everything else and fit neatly into a set working area. Don't just leave it floating with no consideration. Otherwise, insert the video into a blank PowerPoint slide and make it fill the entire screen, so it's easier for your audience to see what's going on. If you want to keep the slide count down and insert video into PowerPoint as a layer on the slide, one option, which also works well if you need to share your presentation with others, is to go to the Playback tab on the ribbon and look at the Video Options section in the middle. There's a checkbox to Play Full Screen, which means that you can make the video fairly small on the slide and it will play full screen when in slideshow mode. It can be tiny if you don't want it noticeable, or even off the slide entirely, but it will still play full screen with no loss of quality, and it will appear in front of all the other content, so it can be a pretty useful function. Next, still on the Playback tab in the Video Options section in the middle, use the drop-down menu to choose when the video starts. There are three options here, and they can be a bit misleading. In-click sequence and automatically both mean the video starts to play when the play animation is next in the animation order. If you have nothing else animating on the slide, then it's easy. But if there are other objects animating, then in-click means that you have to click for the video to play and other objects may animate first. Automatically means that it will start immediately after the last animation you added. With either of these options, you're best going to the Animation tab on the ribbon and choosing Animation pane for the right-hand side. Here, you'll see a list of all the animations on the slide, and the blue play icon shows you when the video will play. A number with a mouse icon shows you need to click. No number and a clock icon shows it will happen after the previous animation. You can change when either of these things happen by dragging the animation up or down the animation list, or using the arrows on the top right-hand corner of the animation pane. You could also use other animations on the video, such as an entrance animation to bring it into the slide at a particular point, and an exit animation to remove it once it's finished playing. And that's it! Now you know how to embed video in PowerPoint. But you can do so much more than that, and I know that you want to. Click on a video in PowerPoint and two new tabs appear on the ribbon. The Video Format tab gives you options to change the video style. Things like corrections to change the brightness and contrast aren't great, nor are the colour wash options, although you might find a use for the grayscale choice. What may be useful is changing the poster frame using the button on the left, which alters the still image you see before the video starts playing. You can use any image that you have saved on your computer, which could be a still from later in the video, or something PowerPoint has found online, or even an icon, which I wouldn't recommend as it looks odd jumping from a totally different image or icon to the video. The Video Effects button in the middle of the ribbon gives you a whole load of video style options, most of which are terrible and you shouldn't go anywhere near but it may be useful to apply them in some instances, or to give you more fine detail control. You have all the same formatting options as with images, so a shadow may help the video to stand out, or perhaps a small amount of 3D rotation to fit the video onto an image with a TV screen or at an angle to create a more natural scene. Just remember, with all of this, that you probably want people to view the video easily. So minimise what effects you apply and make the video as large as possible, or ideally, full screen. You can also crop a video using the crop button on the right-hand side of the ribbon, which can be useful to remove things you don't want, like the black tram lines created if a widescreen video has been saved in the old 4x3 aspect ratio. Or you could crop to zoom in on an area of the video that you like. You can also crop the video to any of the standard shapes in PowerPoint using the Video Shape button in the middle of the ribbon. Mostly, this is going to look terrible, so be cautious of doing it. 
but you could imagine a circle crop to show a lens into something like a machine to show the details, especially if you put an internal shadow using the video effect options on the ribbon. Or give the impression of a clinical imaging system looking inside the body. Unfortunately, unlike with picture cropping, there is no option to choose the aspect ratio, so use a circle shape to line up to, to get it right, rather than guessing by eye. What if you don't want a standard shape? Perhaps your branding uses a certain angle throughout, and you'd like to create a block to the side for a title, quote or callout. You can't use edit points to alter the video frame, but you can use the merge shape tools, if they're on your quick access toolbar. The merge shape tools are on the shape format tab on the ribbon, but that doesn't appear if you have a video selected. Add them to your QAT, and as long as you have a standard shape selected with the video, you can subtract any shape or combination of shapes from the video. Or you could use the intersect option to draw a completely freeform shape and use edit points to get something very precise, and then use that as the custom crop frame. Another use for intersect would be to fill text with a video. Type your text, set the font and size, position the text over the video, select the video and shift click to select the text, and then choose intersect to get a video shaped like your text. It's important to select the video first when doing this, otherwise you'll just keep the text and not the video text. Video text in turn can then be put over the top of another video if you're super keen and can create some rather neat double video effects, all using PowerPoint. And you can take things even further, because why wouldn't you? And use fragments if you want lots of videos that you can get independent control over, which can produce an interesting staggered play effect. You can start to do some really interesting things, so give it a go and try them out. And for even more detail on using video in PowerPoint, including editing, trimming, playing and extracting video, check out the full blog post on brightcarbon.com.